Well, good morning and welcome back to Hebegon Central, where we are slowly but surely taking charge of this topic, taking charge of this investigation. This Hebegon, Japanese Bigfoot topic. Not that we are big old egghead experts, we're not experts, we're amateurs amateurs like Sherlock Holmes but we are taking charge because no one else is and someone has to because it's important thank you team Hibigon this is a team effort I touched on this a couple of days ago Hibigon range Mount Hiba, the center of modern Hibigon, Japanese Bigfoot activity, is here. Here in Hiroshima Prefecture, western Japan, in the heart of the Chugoku Mountains. Most of the sightings are around here, and most of the sightings seem to be of juveniles and mommies. Where are the daddies? Where are they? And what are they doing? I am here in Fukuyama City. The Hibigon, Japanese Bigfoot sightings closest to me, were here, kind of scary close. And the three missing people that I have from Fukuyama City mysteriously disappearing people are from here the less populated side of this river pressed up against the mountains with forest access to the wilderness interior everyone lives on the other side but everyone disappears on this side that's odd Getting a little ahead of ourselves, but I don't mind. A little sneak peek. In 1982, one of these creatures was spotted here. Estimated two meters tall. From what it was said to be carrying, it was carrying something. I think it was a daddy. A daddy he begun on a mission. A daddy head of the household provider he begun now what he was carrying changes everything we know or thought we knew about bigfoot sasquatch he begun as if what we have already learned here hasn't changed everything already now the greatest concentration of missing people in this prefecture is exactly here in the northern countryside between Higashi Hiroshima and Mihara. These two cities between them have 10% of the population in this prefecture. 10% of the people. But they account for half of the missing people. Last time I counted. Now two more missing people were put on the list this summer and yesterday when I checked there was one more so you always have to check and update these figures now that's National Police Agency data we are very grateful to them but um, well they aren't telling the whole story Mihara little Mihara has four missing persons on their list their national list Tokyo one Mihara 4. But go to Mihara City Hall. Ask at Mihara City Hall and they have 17 more missing persons that fit the same profile. Another cluster is here in the north and northwest of Hiroshima City. The fringe of the forest. Two missing persons from Mount Hiba. 
from right off the mountain and two or three from Miyoshi here. I was just thinking if if I were a bank robber, say, or a serial killer, or a cannibal, yeah, let's say I was a a serial killer cannibal. I think I would try to apply the advice that my dear old dad gave me back when I was a boy. He said, Kyle, don't go doo-doo all over the place where you eat. Or words to that effect. And that's good advice. He meant... Don't steal your victims and create a lot of hubbub in the same place where you want to cook them and eat them in peace and quiet. So if I were a cannibal, I wouldn't go eating the people on my street because sooner or later someone might catch on. The cops might come, start ringing doorbells wanting to interview everybody. The heat would start coming down. So if I were a cannibal, I would, well, I'd get me a real creepy old van and I'd go on day trips. Happy Sunday drives and grab my victims far away from my house. That would be the smart thing. That would be the the prudent cannibal thing to do. Now, of course, if any nosy neighbor came snooping around, peeping in my basement dungeon windows, I might, I might have to eat her. Might be forced to eat her. But generally speaking, my neighbors would be off limits. Off the menu, because we don't want the heat. Well, that's how I would be a cannibal. Not giving advice, not recommending the cannibal lifestyle, not at all. Next door, Okayama Prefecture has only one missing person on the national police list. And, well, guess where the person went missing? Guess where? Use your head. Use the information you've learned here. Not from Okayama City or Kurashiki, or any of the coastal cities where almost everybody lives. No, of course not. Didn't disappear from there, but from here. We also have three Hibigon sightings in Jinseki Kogen here. You see, this would be the weak point of my cannibal strategy. My victims from my grabbing day trips might wind up pointing back to me. They'd say, uh, everyone's disappearing from a day trip sized circle around Kyle's house with spokes leading back to Kyle's house. Well, on the other hand, no one's disappearing right off of Kyle's actual street. Oh, well, unless you count that one nosy old lady or that other nosy old lady, two nosy old ladies, and those meddling kids and that dog. You see, it's just possible that the cops might begin to piece things together. Now, I'm not a policeman. I'm not even a real credentialed big photologist or... Hebeganologist. But people are disappearing here at a rate 132 times that of Tokyo, according to the National Police. Higher than that now. I have to update that. If we go by City Hall records, it's more like 500 times. I don't know anything for sure, but we have found... Reports going back hundreds of years of Hibagon called by various names, taking people from all over Japan, but especially from these regions. 
I think the Hebegon are real. I think they are extremely intelligent, more intelligent than you, more intelligent than me. I think they take people. They don't take enough to raise general alarms. They don't normally take people near where they live. They don't want search and rescue parties tramping through their living room. They're smart enough to grasp my dad's advice and obey it most of the time. Now, I admit this is all circumstantial, but it's also predictive. Predictive. I think most Hebegon never take people. I think it's a criminal minority. I hope so. We should all hope so. But it's worth keeping in mind what some of the native North American Indians called the Bigfoot or Sasquatch in their languages. Now, I don't want to tar them all with the same brush, not without more evidence and not without a fair trial. But I remember the tsunami stones and what happens when you don't listen to your elders. And I believe Seraphine Long. I believe her and Lucy Thompson and others who have tried to tell us and the Japanese elders too who have tried to tell us. My suggestion to you interested in the missing persons in North America what uh, what some call the missing 411 phenomenon see if those clusters point back to somewhere see if those clusters might be connected they might be points on an arc or spokes on a wheel and maybe a cluster at the hub I'm not looking at North America I live here and my focus is a hundred percent here no one else is doing this here so this is where I can try to be helpful but look in your area look at the publicized cases and clusters in North America and let's try to make some sense out of this arcs and spokes and hubs that's just my suggestion look for them and remember if your own ancestors were a bunch of stupid dummies what does that make you okay this is part one we'll look at part two of this real soon thank you have a great weekend bye bye